Tell us right now, here, live on Impulsive. She She's giving them a real serious look. A look that they only understand. No way. <clears throat> Breaking news, live on Impulsive. She's, she's pregnant. Woo! My brother's fighting on uh, Showtime Sports, uh, apparently. In, in 14 days. Uh, August 29th, apparently. Uh, my brother's a uh, fighter now. Apparently, I've never been on live television before. Apparently. Powerball. But apparently, what? sometimes me and my grandfather, we watch the Powerball. <laughs> Are we rolling? Yeah. I love imitating that kid. That kid's great. He changed my life. Welcome back to Impulsive, the number one podcast in the world. Thank you guys for listening, watching, viewing, and subscribing. We're here in Puerto Rico. Uh, the set, it, well... We're working on it. We're getting roasted on Twitter right now because people are not happy. Why? Well, we put a piece of plywood over the window and wrote impulsive that's, and black paint on it. That's creativity. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, okay. We'll take it. Did you just go on a date with Corinna? What the f's up with the shirt? Uh, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. That shit's so bright, I can barely look at you. Wow. He's oh, a hype beast with a mullet. <laughs> Seat Geek is the presenting sponsor of today's special episode. Live events are back, and if you're looking for tickets to anything, sports, concerts, and even Jake's beatdown of Tyron Woodley, you can use code LOGAN for $20 off your first purchase. The link is in the description. Zoom into my laces, bro. I got supreme laces. <laughs> oh, look at that shit. <laughs> is Supreme still like You're so not a hype beast at all. <laughs> Your biceps are too big to be a hype beast. <laughs> that is true. Fuck. Really? You're like, look at my look at my Supreme. And then and just like, no, like they're just looking at your biceps. There's a lot of things you can't do if your biceps are too big. Yeah, a lot do of you, things. No, and sir, that's what I'm, people I'm, don't understand. No, people don't think about that. I, it pisses me off so much. Same, the worst. How much people don't realize yeah. if you have big biceps, there's certain shit you can't do. You can't do. When I was trying to be a pop star for Fuck. a second, the, the the team was like, yeah, dude, you got to stop eating and working out. I said, what? They go, what what, what pop star do you know that's like fucking huge? I'm not going to lie. Kelly. <laughs> you could have said anyone else. <laughs> anyone else. That was the name. 50 Cent. Cent. <laughs> 50 Cent. All right. He's, he's not a pop star. He, he's, he's a, a rapper, rapper. who got rapper. shot. Yeah, you. I'm not gonna lie. I was watching one of your music videos one time. I was like, he's too big to be. There. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. I told you, bro, bro. It, it, it's just not a good look. I look like a bodybuilder trying to like sing a song. <laughs> what the fuck is that, bro? Imagine if Bradley Martin dropped like a like a, like a song. Dude. Everyone would be like, okay, dude, come on. Like a classic <laughs> piano cover get, of something. Get back in the gym, man. <laughs> well, how are you, Jake? Jakey, I'm doing good, man. Good, good to have you on. Uh, on Impulsive, thank you. Thank first you. time you are doing uh, an episode in our brand new warehouse that we have here in Puerto Rico. This is this is also probably your first time, first day, second well, time. Well, I just ran a podcast back with my friends right before you. But it was today, though. Yeah, first day. I actually borrowed your, uh, is he your executive assistant? What, what do you call Marcos? Yeah, sure. His, I would his, say <laughs> the shit. The, he's the best. I borrowed his hoodie. Hey, man, do you have any have... clothes that you own? Yeah, those are my shorts. I know. You're still. 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 <laughs> It's been a week. Change. I own this hat. <laughs> I own this hat. Everybody, I wear this hat. So by the time this episode's coming out. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. When Mike can't bring it today, I guess my hat. Uh, <laughs> my hat for I'm everybody. So, tired. so you're, you're fi you have a fight coming up, huh? <laughs> Why'd she look at me? <laughs> me? <laughs> I just didn't know who you were talking to. Obviously me. You, you, you're, yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm just joshing. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I do that. I do that. Yeah, you're a fighter now, huh? I do that thing. Apparently. Apparently, Apparently I'm a fighter. I, I mean, yes, whenever this episode drops, the fight will be in probably two days, three days. Yeah, maybe four even days, four. Four days, maybe. August, August 29th. 29th. It'll be this coming Sunday, most likely. And all of us will be in Cleveland together. Pop. Our hometown, watching you fight at the Allegiant, the, someone's elite. There's the Rocket the Mortgage Allegiant. Fieldhouse. What the where, fuck? Where were you I going? You were thinking Las Vegas, oh. Allegiant Stadium. It's Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse in Cleveland. When you try to rep your own hood. My biceps are just too big. <laughs> don't know it. My, my it's cutting off circulation. It was pretty. The <laughs> Supreme shirt. It's like, can't wait to go back to my uh, my te my hometown. Uh, it's just, you know, the place around the corner. You know where we grew up? What, you don't give a fuck about your hometown? <laughs> no, like the place next to the gas station. No, because when we were there, it was called the Quicken Loans Arena. Yep. Now it's different. Mm-hmm. 
Now it's the Rocket Mortgage Fields, <laughs> which is where you're fighting. Do you know? Uh, do you know what kind of venue uh, that is? It's a. Uh, it's an arena. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> we're unboxing. <laughs> hey, buddy, are you stupid? And, <laughs> and Logan's been. Logan's oh, been. Wait, I got this. Ever since he. <laughs> Ever since he beat Floyd Mayweather, he's just been on a bender with zero brain cells. If it doesn't have to do with NFTs anymore, he's brain dead. Bro, I literally w hung out with him one night. Like, I think this was two weeks ago. Like, right when he got back from your guys' crazy trip. And he, like, started telling me about, like, what he was doing last night. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was there. Oh, <laughs> the whole time. Oh, no. <laughs> and he was like... Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> do you know I do this to everyone? People get so mad, especially girls, bro, because I don't remember anything. <laughs> My long-term memory sucks. I'll be like, yeah, did you? Did, I did this one thing this one time. I, I like dented a Rolls Royce. It was nuts. This girl goes, yeah, I was with you. It was me, it was me and you. <laughs> it's just it's a two-seater. <laughs> people were, when I put out a video talking about it, and people were genuinely, like, worried. They're like, yo, I think he's, I think he's calling out for help, man. Hmm. Like no, nah, I don't think it's I don't think it's reached that level, but he definitely has been he definitely has been on a bender. <laughs> Free Logan. Got no brain. You know what I do now? I get fucked up and buy NFTs. <gasps> I spent 150k on the way to the club on unwrapped strikers. The first sports NFT project on the blockchain. He brought nice. his computer to yeah. the club. I brought Jake, it. Personal hotspot that bitch. To the club to nice. buy NFTs. But but I got some NFTs as well. Oh yeah? Anything you're bullish on? Couple of things I'm bullish on. What are you what are you the most bullish on? Well, there's this new project. What's bullish? Uh Wilder World. And basically they're gonna have like ten thousand of these like customizable yeah, cars. You don't fucking say, bro. It's the same shit. So so why am I getting yelled at? <laughs> I, I just so I'm tired of hearing I'm about all these boxer. Yeah, but all these projects are ten thousand unique. Shut up. But in the crypto zoo launching well, on September first this weekend, there's ten thousand base eggs. So, so you're Anything he doesn't have model. his hands in, I think ten thousand is a good number. What was the one you were talking about? Wild, wild, it features Deontay Wilder. Yeah, it's just ten thousand various Deontay Wilder cars. It is. Yeah, it's ten thousand Deontay Wilders. <laughs> cars, 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 cars. Cars that look like Deontay. And you can Wilder. race them and such. Have you been able? I to love cars, so. It's true. You've always loved cars. Have you been able to do anything besides training? Because like this, you're definitely going real, real hard in training with that fight coming up. I am, um, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be real honest. I'm, I'm starting to lose my mind a little bit. But that's a good thing. You want to start to lose your mind. But I literally haven't done anything. I think this is the first time I've gone outside of the the house or the neighborhood in like ten days. Wow. Pro yeah. <laughs> Cap. I saw him yesterday. Yeah. Cap. I, I was outside. I was like, wow, it's so beautiful outside. I hear. Eh, eh. <laughs> he pulls up with his girl. Son tells We're going to go look at the sunset. Son <laughs> tells me that was inside the neighborhood. That was still in the neighborhood. All right. What do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm literally all I've been doing is training for a hundred days straight. And I'm ready. More, more than ready. This is the fun part. You know, at least the, the hard work is, is sort of over. And now, you know, I get to do the press, the media, the being in Cleveland in the hometown and then the bright lights, showtime. That's that's why I love this sport so much. Is for fight week. Yeah, that moment's the coolest thing ever. There, there's it's a moment. The there's a moment in time, bro. Straight up, where you get to be the coolest guy on the planet. You, you you knock out Tyron Woodley. You're the coolest guy on the planet that night. Th that night, at least. At least that night. Yeah, that on is Twitter. true. That is true. It's 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 it, how the fight game works. Like that's why fighting is so exciting. Fighters are revered. Like bro, a fighter walks into uh, um, a facility, like the energy changes. That's the guy, the guy, Conor McGregor's here. He's fucking knocked out Jose Aldo. Like, yeah. you get to be the shit. All eyes on you. It, it's, Unless it's, you get knocked it's big, out. It's high risk, high reward. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. That, that's the thing about it is, you know, even if you're on a basketball team, you win. they win the championship. It's like, oh, there's still like 10 other guys. Or a football team, there's 60 other guys. With boxing or fighting, it's all you or all nothing. You know what I'm saying? So I can't believe you're fighting Tyron Woodley. <clears throat> Bro, he, he, he came on this podcast and has not won since. Oh yeah. my God, what if it's- You know, you know that, right? We think it might be a curse. So- No, he's, for, for, for he's, he's the only I, I athlete the, yeah, yeah. who has come on this no, podcast no, 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 no. I mean, and just for continues him. Yeah. to lose. Yeah, just for him. Yeah. I, do have a, I do have a couple curses going into this fight. Uh -huh. uh, the Drake curse. Oh, oh shit. So uh, anytime he's like supported some an athlete <sighs> oh, yeah, publicly, they lose. They yeah, lose. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, Chael Sonnen, same <clears throat> thing. As soon as he like predicts someone's going to win, 
they lose. So Ch- Chael picked you to win. I, I believe so. Really? I believe so. Yes. So He's, you'll he, be the one that breaks the curse for both. Yes, of you. and I, I plan on saging and and uh, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna sage doing, I'm, I'm no, I'm saging like myself and doing like spiritual cleansing the week of the fight. Like what to we, lift the Drake curse? What are you talking about? With like, baptized? With like yep. Lewis Mack type shit? Yeah, Lucas Mack Lucas is going to help Mack. me with this. <laughs> My you brain just, is off today. You're just going to breathe? <laughs> and sage. Okay, and, don't and breathe too hard. We know what happened <laughs> last time. Like, like you're gonna, you're gonna. I don't know what we're gonna do, but I, I need to. Something. I need to get rid of this Drake curse somehow. Bro, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, bro. Lucas, the guy who's going to help you get rid of that these curses that week of. Bro, he definitely punched me in the dick at a party. Oh yeah, this story. <laughs> I remember yeah, that. This story's great, bro. You you know how fucked up we were though. He had to be pretty fucked up because he punched Israel Adesanya right in the chest too. Risky, is he, dude? Really? That's risky. risky. This guy was. This guy was punch anyone else, bro. Izzy, he punches Izzy in the chest. Izzy goes. They had been talking for like seven seconds, by the way. <laughs> like how you go from like, hey, my name's Lucas. To no, they know each other. They know each other. Yeah, he punched me in the dick. I was I was talking I was talking to a girl and him, and he's talking. He's like, "Right, you need to listen to me." And I'm like, "I'm like, bro, you're not actually saying anything." He goes, "No, you don't." I said, dick punch. I go, "Bro, the only reason I'm not ripping your fucking head off right here right now is because you helped my brother breathe." <laughs> you just see Jake in the back. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, go help him. Don't hit him. His breath work Don't is phenomenal. He, he, he can really lead a, a breath work session, but I just wasn't sure if that warranted not beating his ass or punching you, me right in my bro, cock. Bro, he was in training camp like for a hundred days straight. And as you know, you're sober the whole entire time. And then you, we let loose yeah. the night of the win. And some things get a little People bit People get their dicks punched. How mad would you be if he fucking... Hit you and you're like, oh, and then he leans over and whispers in your ear, breathe in, <laughs> <laughs> breathe out. <laughs> He's, wait, isn't he like also low key the reason you broke your nose? High key, high key, actually. Um, Yo, get rid of this fucking guy. <laughs> no, what the fuck? Right, this no, is where no, I draw no. the line. I, bro, this is where I draw Because you the didn't line. get punched, assaulted. He has punched by, by a New Zealander just, at a party. <laughs> He's, he's in very, front of a girl you're he's, macking he's on. He's very forceful about his breathing, man. Like what? I, I broke my nose because I was, was sitting on an elevated platform and passed out. Why did you pass out? Because I was meditating. No. <laughs> don't say it, don't say it. You had an influx of oxygen <laughs> that rushed to your brain because of your breath work. <laughs> Dude, and you too. fucking collapsed and broke your nose a month before your professional <laughs> boxing fight. This guy. Hey, just needs, breathe. This guy needs to take some deep breaths. He's talking about body stuff about the brain. It's because you got a tight ass shirt explode. on. I'm fucking angry. He's gonna explode. I'm He's angry. so funny. I've never seen somebody wear yellow and be so angry. I've also never seen someone be so angry at like a Zen Buddhist before. Like this dude is the is the, the epitome of Bro, passive. That's what I thought until he punched you in the violated cock. my dick. genitals. <laughs> He's sensitive, bro. bro. You only have one genital. Yeah, I know. <laughs> My genital. <laughs> no, I, th- I think it. Is, I think it is. There is. A, it's a plural. I believe. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this program to bring you a word from our sponsor. Seat Geek is the presenting sponsor of today's special episode. Live events are back, and if you're looking for tickets to anything, sports, concerts, and even Jake's beatdown of Tyron Woodley, you can use code Logan for twenty dollars off your first purchase. The link is in the description. They rate every ticket from zero to ten to make sure you're getting a good deal. Green means good, red means bad. The call to action: use the code Logan. Twenty dollars off tickets at Seat Geek. Off your first purchase with the promo code Logan. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. Back to the program. Do, you, do your balls like kind of go up in your stomach sometimes? Yeah. <laughs> when you get punched by New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> only there's only certain times your balls do that. If you like have like a Tinder date and she doesn't come as you, she was presented, and you're like, oh, what's that? And it's like back in there. But besides that, like no, this, I've never like, like, like this. <laughs> The, bo- the boys ain't happy. You gotta go home. My balls just hide in my ass all the time. They're like, <laughs> I really, uh, that was a serious question. Have I ever? No. Um, like, do they, do they kind of tuck themselves up? How cold yeah. are you sometimes? Yep. Do yeah. they? Is, is mm-hmm. it, maybe it's a, our family thing. No, I think it might be a family thing. It's like a fear. I think it happens in 
high stress or like fear? No, I'm talking about like regularly. Like yeah. before you guys. <laughs> it actually happened to me today. <laughs> really? Yeah. While I was getting the blowjob. Yeah. Your balls went into mm -hmm, your. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, mm -hmm. that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about, bro. That's bro, that's bro, that's bro, bro, bro. That's why you gotta pull your balls down. No, 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 no. If you're just holding your ball, you can't be holding your balls. <laughs> well, how do girls play? How do girls like juggle and play and like lick your balls you, when they're giving you? You saw it happen. So, 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 bro, with me, bro, with me. If a girl knows me like very well, you know, someone who I've spent a lot <laughs> she of time wraps with, them up and pulls she, them out. they have a strategy. They, it. they, it's a little tuck. They keep them like locked in the scrotum. Got you it. have girls put your balls in a headlock? Yes. It's called a cock lock. <laughs> okay, what did I say? You can't give any advice until you shave the bottom of your stomach. This guy trims everything but right here. It looks like a rat is trying to fucking escape his balls. Why, do you do that? Why does your stomach have a goatee? He says it's bro. his thing. I said it's not a show thing. It, it's a weird it, thing. Show it. What bro. the fuck? Why do you do that? Oh looks like you have a. F <laughs> like, what the fuck is that, man? Yo, but he is in good shape. He's in yeah, great shape, but it's shape. distracting because you have ratatouille attached to your pubes. Style preference. It's not a style preference. It looks like your clipper died on you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> <laughs> 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 ladies, yeah, before he even said yay, he's like, ladies, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You've we've done this pre-fight podcast so many times. Three, <laughs> what? Three or three? Right? Three fights. Three fights. So I gotta yeah, ask bro. the question: What's different in the training agenda for Mister Woodley? Um, I think everything has remained the same. Like, right? It's if it's not broke, don't fix it. However, you know we've all challenged ourselves in this camp to take it that one <clears throat> extra degree further with organization, professionalism, focus. And doing all the little things right because we know that this is a dangerous guy. And August 29th, I have to be super sharp. It's my biggest test yet. And the, the most amount of people will, will be watching. And there's a lot of there's a lot of pressure. Um, but preparation breeds confidence. And that's why we've gone so hard. And being down in Puerto Rico, there's so much focus. Like even when I was in Miami, it was like, oh, they come, come to 11, come to live, da, 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 go to this dinner. And sometimes they'd be like, oh, Oh, why not? Or Logan would come up and be like, do shrooms. It's just Ben Askren. <laughs> <laughs> so here, being down here in Puerto Rico, like. <laughs> With his tight ass shirt. <laughs> do these shrooms. He goes, he, goes, he, goes, he goes, bro, I have a fight coming up. I go, it's Ben Askren. <laughs> he goes, he goes. And I did the show. So no one knows. Mike comes up behind me. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> no, one's, no one knows this, but Jake was on shrooms the night he fought Ben Askren. He was tripping balls. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> he looked like a weird alien yeah. figure. Animals. I was like, just get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing on earth? What about Puerto Rico? What's the, what's the, I saw you uh, running uh, what suicide drills yesterday? Sprints. Sprints, Sprints yeah. in the, in the 9,000 degree humid weather. Uh, how has that played a factor? I, I think training down here is a cheat code, especially in the, in this is the middle of summer, the hottest, the most humid. I remember, you know, when I was training here and then went to LA and then to Cleveland for like the pressers and stuff, we were doing workouts and I was like, wow, it is extremely easy to breathe here mm. because in Puerto Rico, the humidity just gets to you. It's, it, oh. it sucks you dry, the sweat. Um, the sun, all, everything about it. So I, I think it's beneficial. It's almost like training in Big Bear where you're in altitude uh, and, and there's less oxygen. I, I feel that same effect here. Um, but look, man, I don't see it going eight rounds. Like I don't, I don't even think I'll have to use my cardio for this one. <laughs> you said, when have you used it yet? <laughs> yeah, that's oh, a good yeah. point. <laughs> no, what no. are you cardio? We haven't seen it. I see you, the longest I've ever seen you been in a boxing room is when you do that lap before you start the fight. You just like walk around and go like this. And that's the longest. And I'm pretty sure all of your press pictures are from that. It's not even from you actually fighting. Are you, are you worried at all that Tyron Woodley is actually not as like marketable of a fighter in, in promoting your fight as like Ben Askren was? Yeah, I'm, I'm more like, bro, I've carried... All, of All the pr promotion for this. Tyron doesn't Absolutely. give a fuck, bro. He, he hasn't done a single thing. He 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 might be the the, the worst person. <laughs> he's not a good. He's not a real good dance to partner. Ever do social media ever. He just reposts everyone's stories on his story. Because he like, probably has. Oh, like someone mentioned me. Add the story. Add the story. <laughs> add the story. Doesn't even add text. Just adds whatever story he was tagged into his story. Like that's not how you fucking <laughs> do social media. 
Ben, but see, Ben Askren did a good. We did talked a good about job. it, and bro, the, he marketed the fuck out of that. Fight. There was a point where people legitimately thought Ben was gonna win because of how good he was like selling it, like he was training his ass off, and the <laughs> odds shifted and everything. And I was like, God damn! But <laughs> Ty Tyron, what I will say, has that built-in star power of you know being a bigger fighter than Ben already. Uh, and and people know him as a striker and a, and a knockout guy, and he was a five time UFC champion. You know, so he automatically has a bigger presence. But Ben definitely did a better job with the shit talk and, and making people think that he was gonna win. But I've carried this promotion. Uh, I, I think people are gonna tune in regardless. When you when you at this last press conference made the bet with him that the <sighs> if you win, Tyron oh. Woodley has to get a tattoo that says "I love Jake Paul." And if he wins, you have to get a tattoo that says, I love Tyron Woodley. There's no way either of you are actually going to get this tattoo, no? I mean. Like, 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 dude, if he loses, he's not going to get. I, you know what I would do, bro? <laughs> I tell everyone to go fuck themselves. <laughs> Why then, would he but, do that? But then, like. Your word. Your word as a man. Dude, he and, don't like, for the fuck. rest of his life. When people, um, the Jake Paulers or whatever my fan base is called now, <laughs> see him, see him in public, they're gonna be like, "Get the fucking tattoo!" They're gonna harass him for the rest oh. of his life. So if he just gets the tattoo, people are like, "All right, you're a man of your word. Respect. You lost fair yeah. and square. You know, you're not salty." I think he showed his hand when he hesitated to take that bet. He's like, sh sh "Should I? Should I do it?" <gasps> yeah. Yeah, that, that was, Yo, he, was, he said it like he was like the Wiggles talking to the kids at the concert. Should I do it, guys? And they're like, yeah, okay then. <laughs> I think I think he showed his hand. I That's, have a tattoo artist coming to the fight. Oh, my God. Like you're just going to send him in afterwards yep. to Tyron's locker room? Yep. Like the, with a pen buzzing already? No, seriously. She, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's tattoo baby. She's like one of the most famous tattoo artists. <laughs> She has like a wireless tattoo gun. Is she prepared to hold him down and, and forcefully tattoo him? We yes, we have we have shackles. <laughs> That's not true. It, it's actually but. from their sex life. It's not even for that actual day. But they carried around with them next to his gloves. Uh. Spe speaking of uh, set of your sex life, you said that the humidity down here was, uh, and I quote, sucking you dry. Yeah. Earlier, yeah. Uh, has that been the only thing sucking you dry during this training camp? Yeah. Wow, uh, <laughs> this is a pretty aggressive question. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just breathe breathe there's, there's been some other things <laughs> there's a couple of things yeah you, you yeah. your girlfriend julia rose is here yeah in the building Hi. yeah she, she's, she's right there, there. <laughs> julia rose paul that is so is that so official explain what's going on that then there yeah well yeah um we're i, I think we're kind of i think we're married uh, okay, so you're you're not. Oh, I didn't know if they were serious. No, like, no, 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 no. No, I'm uh, telling you, you're not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like you're you think that you're wrong. <laughs> I know. I'm joking. Her I'm face. joking. I'm joking. Thanks for the support. No, hold up. But I'm, shitty brother. But um, shitty one. No, he's just trying to get no, it done for you. Yeah, you're not married. <laughs> I got her. A, I got her a promise ring. Oh, oh that's nice. Uh, I got her a promise ring. You know, nice. we're, we're taking things ten times more serious. This is the best. We ever felt in our relationship. You got her a promise ring. I saw it, Jake. Yeah. Whole lot that of promise. Ain't no, that ain't no promise ring. Uh, that's know, a commitment that's ring. That was a fifty thousand dollar engagement ring that you called a promise ring. I know, I know. You know what I, a promise ring looks like? But it's, that, it's a band. But that's, but that's my little shorty. <laughs> That's a it, promise. This it. is a promise ring. Is that a promise ring? No, me? no. I don't I, like no. You, you but, buy it at Spencer's, it's three dollars. A promise ring isn't um, you know, somebody's down payment to a house. <laughs> What did you promise true, exactly? True. What was the promise? Just uh, <laughs> just a commitment, a commitment to forever. A promise to commitment for what? What, what were you committed to, bro? <laughs> to our relationship. Right. Like the series. I want to I want to have a family with her. <gasps> no way. Tell us right now here live on Impulsive. <gasps> she She's giving them a real serious look. A look that they only understand. No way. <sighs> She's she's pregnant. Uh, I started. Uh, 
She's in the delivery room, just just baby. Wait, is that a joke or not? No, it is a joke. All right, bro, I was about to cry. I was too. I actually was. Fuck you. I'm the only one in this room right now that pictured her being pregnant and him breathing and his coach teaching him how to coach her how to breathe. <laughs> Tell her to breathe in. All right, honey, breathe in a little bit. No, 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 quietly. Punch. Breathe in quietly. Baby comes out, he just punches punch it in the nuts. <laughs> Y'all teach you how to Lucas breathe, Mac, baby. bro, I'm sorry about these rules. Hey, I, am, bro. Hey, I almost gotta... made your brother cry, dude. Look at him. That was fucked up. Bro, you want to know what's fucked up is every single time I... I Talk about the promise ring. You're like, well, what the fuck is a promise for? A promise to forever commitment. Well, bro, here's fuck my confusion. you. <laughs> Suck a dick, bro. Oh, Suck a dick. Oh, you little, you're a, you're a single, easy, you're easy. A single fucking fuck boy <laughs> who, put, who puts your dick in ten girls a fucking week. How about that? You should get a promise ring to yourself. Oh. You should, you should get a commitment ring to your fucking self, you bitch. I've never seen you run through this many girls in my fucking life. You're a whore. You're a dirty whore. You'll never find love at the rate you're going. You're going to be 50 years old in fucking Ibiza, and you're going to be able to get your dick hard because you'll be doing too much fucking Molly, and you have five STDs, you whore. Oh my god. Bro, a you minute ago I was about the criteria of happiness. Now my feelings are hurt. He had he had way too much fun. How long have you been waiting to see? So that? long. He threw a beer. So long, bro. He's a beast. He said, you know, Paul's actually catch the future. I, I, <laughs> Watch this actually bro. happen. I don't think I don't think you're wrong. That's <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not, bro. Actually, recently he was talking to the because bro. Every time I talk about having a real relationship and like a kid and like family and shit, which by the way, like I think is right for me. Like I need, like I don't want to do that shit. Like I don't want to be me either. Jake he doesn't want to. Yeah, I don't want. I oh, hate this. True, I true, hate true, it, true, bro. True, true. We're running not kidding. Running. You tell me that We're you do want to find love. You do want to find I, love. so guess badly. What? Guess what? I I found my fucking soulmate. Oh, and so, and so I, the applause. I need it. I need to lock her down. And that, and bro, she's running around LA, sexy as fuck. Bro, she's Julia Rose, bro. Every guy wants to get with her, bro. I'm put a fucking whole house on her fucking <laughs> finger and so everyone can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, you guys are really perfect together. You, I guys, love you guys know how to get ratchet sometimes, huh? <laughs> oh my god. She uh she just Yeah, somebody else described that. What you said by the way. <laughs> Not gonna describe that. Has, no. she, has she met mom yet? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is going on with this kid? Huh? Dude, this shirt's too tight. <laughs> the shirt's too tight. Yeah, mom bicep. mom loves her. Mom mom wants us to have Kids. My mom actually was like, ha if you like, she was gonna be mad yeah. if we don't have kids. She, mom is very selfish. All she wants is grandkids. Yeah. 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 It, all, it's, all it's, she, she's, she, uh, understands that we're adults now and she wants to baby us still. She does the best she can. But, uh, I think she wants you to have grandkids before she wants you to find true love. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying. That's why I'm most upset about this. Yeah. Well, I'm I, I'm like happy for you, but I'm well aware that the timing of this is going to be bad for me because if y'all have a kid, he's not going to get to play with my kids as like same age friends. Yeah. I want them to sucks. go to high school together. I told Logan y'all should turn him on from blind dates when I'm false uh, yeah, You know, bro, this guy tries to find love at the club. Yeah, like, that's what I was going to say. You're looking in the wrong No, I don't. Bro, you, we were literally in the middle of the club and you're looking at this girl like, oh my God, we're like soulmates. And then he turns to me and you're like, dude, she wants love. I go, that girl wants dick. <laughs> and she goes, yeah, I just want to fuck. <laughs> and then he turns to me and you go, oh man, I'm a hopeless romantic. <laughs> 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 and that was not made up. That was word for word. That's exactly what happened. Bro, when I look at these girls in the club, I hope you know that I'm kind of just like, Staring at them because I'm colorblind and I actually can't see anything in the dark. <laughs> you don't know if it's really humans. No, literally. I'm not Plus like, you're on so many drugs. You I'm don't not, even know I'm what not, planet you're 
<laughs> but I'm not. I'm not checking these girls out. I'm trying. You are to not see aware them. of your surroundings <laughs> at all. At all. I think Bell was next to me. Some dude is randomly grinding way too close to Logan, and I asked him. I go, "Is that guy with us?" And he turns to me, and goes, "I don't know." <laughs> Was it Dylan? <laughs> no, it was a random guy. We had a good time. You know, if you dump him in water, his hair is exactly the same. I did know that. That thing defies gravity, that mop, that mop on your head. And another word from our sponsors. Stop right there. I want to tell you about a great product. Our body needs electrolytes, plain and simple. And when we sweat fast or diet or just live our everyday lives, we lose them, leading to headaches, muscle cramps, and weakness. We need them replaced, but maybe we don't want a sugary sports drink to do the job. We're here to tell you about Element, the healthy alternative to sugary electrolyte drinks. Each grab-and-go stick pack replaces essential elect electrolytes with no sugar, no coloring, no artificial ingredients, or any other junk. We all know the popular electrolyte drinks, and they're packed with sugar. This is the version that is actually good for you. It's a great way to support your health and fitness lifestyle, strength training, recovery, or keto diet. In fact, Element is the exclusive hydration partner to Team, to team USA Weightlifting and many Olympic athletes. They have amazing flavors like citrus, watermelon, orange, raspberry. So get your free Element sample pack. Element is your go-to electrolyte drink with no sugar, no artificial ingredients, no coloring, or any other junk. As a listener of the Impulsive Podcast, you can get your free Element sample pack. You only cover the cost of shipping. So get yours here at drinkelement.com slash Logan. The link is in the description. Back to the program. Did, did Tana actually say you had a small dick? Oh, that or was, was weird. that a TikTok? It, or no, was no, it no, clickbait? No, no, no. That was weird. No, no, no. did this. No, she no, said no. this. Yeah, because she said she's this close to... And they just ran. The amount of time she said I had a horse cock is like, well, that's actually I, annoying. We've talked about it but, on this podcast too. But, but, but she was saying like she was this close to a, making an Alyssa Violet exposed video. Yeah. Are you, are you uh, planning uh, or thinking about at all any of the festivities after the fight? Like, like, like honestly, think about this, bro. Think about, think about everything we've built. And George and I are having like a couple moments on this trip alone we walked outside in the warehouse in between podcasts and he's like, bro, this is your fucking warehouse. Where our warehouse. Oh yeah. Our, our oh yeah. I, he told me. That. Bro, I, Mike, I really Mike was like, Mike was like, so, so like, what are you going to do in this warehouse? And I was like, what do you mean, Mike? <laughs> Cause I saw the line <laughs> the, item the cost one. for it on the uh, expense report for impulsive. And I was like, damn, that's a lot of fucking money. And I told Jake and he was like, yeah, no, I, I'm paying half of it. Yeah. And I was like, wait, what? And he goes, yeah, man, there's a boxing gym downstairs. I was like, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> no, but it, I, I guess what I'm saying is like what 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 you've been able to um to build is incredible and you literally get to bring it to your hometown and you're going to be with people you grew up with in the city you grew up in. <laughs> Everyone you love most is going to be there watching. So I, I think it'll be like the, one of the best moments of my life. It will be. Down. It will be. Cuz it's like it's like the the crescendo yeah. of everything our whole life's coming back to the same, to that one spot. We get to bring it home, bro. I'm, I'm jealous. Quite I'm literally. jealous that you get to do it. Quite, I mean, he I knows mean, the quite, stadium name. First of all, quite literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the chase Morgan Freeman yeah, stadium. Yeah. But Not it's called close. the arena, but is that a library? What, what, where are you guys fighting? Exactly. <laughs> I've thought about this a lot and it's like, it, it's, it's going to be a surreal moment. Honestly, I, uh, I'm, I'm excited for the, for the festivities after, and being able to finally like have the pressure off your shoulders. I think I get so serious into training camp and I even try to like have fun and sort of like take the edge off or like crack jokes. But I, I always find myself getting so serious and so putting so much pressure on myself that like I can't even be normal or like even socialize sometimes because I'm all I'm thinking about is the fight. All my, my whole routine is the fight. And so I think the best moment that, that I've ever experienced in my life or the best moments is like the seconds or the days after the fight where I can just be like, oh, yeah. I don't have any worry in the world. I realized this before Floyd. I was I was pacing around the, my hotel room by myself and I was like, damn, if, if, my, if my mental fortitude wasn't where it's at, my mind would literally rip itself apart from the pressure of this event. 100%. You have to be so mentally strong, put together and focused on your mission. Otherwise, you're just going to derail yourself. All fighters experience it. It's, it's, dude, like, you know, you're facing a, a big striker, a very strong, powerful guy. There's got to be a fear at all. Maybe a little bit of like, okay, this could probably end bad for me. Uh, no, honestly. Honestly, I, I I think fighting scared is like the one of the worst things you can do in the world, 
And by the way, you know, I, I bring, I acknowledge the fact that that is a potential outcome of like, Hey, you know, this is a fight. Anything could happen. You know, you're in the ring with a guy who's super strong and, mm. and a legend of the sport and blah, blah, blah. But then I just think back to sparring and I think I've sparred 500 to, I mean, I'm probably estimating at least 500 times in my life. And not a single time has somebody hit me where I'm mm. like, wow, I want to quit, give up. My my knees have never wobbled. Yeah. I've never even been close to being knocked down. And I've been in the ring with people who are way better than Tyron. Yeah. So I think back to that and I say, out of those 500 times where I've had the chance and of the person across from me has been able to knock me out, punch me, you know, round after round after round after round, not a single one of them has ever phased me. So why on, in the 501th time is this fucking guy, this fucking chump, why is he going to be able to do it? Not not going to happen. Yeah. Not going to happen. That's so that, that, that's, why, that's why I'm just like, I know how good I am. I know my skill. I know... I've put in the repetitions. I've been in there with harder people, more talented, more skilled, more experienced people in the boxing ring than Tyron Woodley. And so that's what I just fall back on. You win this fight. I've said this. I feel like I've said these exact lines to you 50 times on vlogs, on podcasts. <laughs> you win this fight. <laughs> then the big question <laughs> is what's next? Like you posted this tweet or this picture of like all these People. Yeah, you had a right. hit, list. Hit, hit list. I was on. I was on your hit list. <laughs> well, you were a question. No, there's mark. a question mark. Oh. <laughs> Just like, because bro, every single interview I do leading up to this fight, there's always the question: Will you ever fight your brother? We want to see that. I mean, you know what that fight's worth. G GP will will not. He will he will pull the electric on the stadium so that it goes out. He will no. not allow that fight to happen. Not a, uh, but yeah, no, Greg probably wouldn't let that. Look, I don't know, bro. I, uh, I'm retired. You know, fuck, fuck, fuck off. Wait, you're retired from, from what? From boxing. It's news, news to everyone. I think. No, no, he's told me that. I mean, he he's accomplished all there is to accomplish in the sport. Uh, yeah, that's true. Think about it. There's no better boxer on the planet than me. <laughs> I, I, Don't you have to win at least one fight? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what are you talking about? I just huh? see one win. What are you talking about? Guess what? We went to a club in Miami. What are you talking about? And I'm, I notice you're not breathing when you look at me. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> we went to the, a club. My brother is. Hello. Do you know. The best boxer in the world. We'll be right with you. Do you know that I. Oh, he, he doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. This guy doesn't know. You don't know. You're making me uncomfortable. You don't know, George. <laughs> you're making me uncomfortable. You have no idea. Yeah, yeah. This is the guy that fought Floyd Mayweather. You fucking idiot. You oh, fucking I'm the best man. boxer Number on the soul. planet. And got it. Okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> Ever. Nah, you want to know what the sign said? We went to a club in Miami. What did it say? Champ is here. Champ is here. <laughs> Liv, the my, boys my, over at Liv Mike goes, out. Mike goes, bro, you don't even have to win a fight. <laughs> it's, they're calling you the champ. You were, being called the, you were being called champ before your first fight. Come on, champ. You got this, champ. No wins. No zero fucking wins. Oh, and one, baby. The other, the other guy we met with in Dubai was like, I don't know, won't do the accent, but I, I, you know, fuck it. I think there's a good chance you get, you get yourself a title fight. I go, Doug, he's 0 and 12. What title is he fighting for? He goes, he goes, I only lost one, Mike. Or two. I'm getting so in Mike's now. mind, I've lost 10 fights. I go, bro. I've had one amateur, one professional bout, and one exhibition. Yeah, but you've had three fights and you haven't won. Any of them. <laughs> Maybe if you had a coach teaching you how to breathe, bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, his, That's the problem, bro. You need in his defense, his opponents have been quite solid. And limited. I fought two people, dude. Yeah, one of them. Why did you say opponents? Like, there are so many of them. Uh, there's, there's a gaming YouTuber. No, that's, what, that's what I'm talking about. No, he thinks I have, like, a, like a very... Expansive <laughs> boxing career, and I've only I lost, lost hundreds of fights. <laughs> I just joke around. I think it's funny, but no, the plural. There's two of them. Two people. It's plural. You know, opponents. He's had some tough fights. You know, the last guy was fucking good. Yeah, bro. he was good. He could he could probably be a, a good boxer. Yeah, I heard about him before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, I heard you still have his hat. 
No. Dude, you did a better job of marketing my fight than I think <laughs> you're doing for your fight. Bro, I saw Bro, people wearing that shirt. Because it's it, it's it was so easy. It was just it was built right in. This is <laughs> this, this guy, I, I Tyron goes. <clears throat> I'm gonna beat your ass. I'm you're a child. The problem, child. And that was his insult. That's all he's given me to work with the whole entire the whole entire promotion. We were almost gonna cause a scene at that uh, at that thing. And by the way, this is what I told you, Logan. Got, I was like, gotta do something. Dramatic. I was like, bro, Logan, you need to fucking take Tyron's yeah. hat because yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he, <laughs> he owes you. He owes me, bro. Yeah, he does. Owe, he actually does you owe, owe me, you. bro. He does. Okay, okay. We gotta, I sold we you a couple couple hundred thousand. Yeah, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. You gotta do something crazy, bro. You wanna know what he's gonna do? He's gonna give him a hat. He's gonna buy more <laughs> NFTs, man. He's not. He doesn't give a shit. <laughs> look, look around. Not do shit. Look around. Our entire production budget, I spent it on NFTs. Like this. Gone. Gone. Well, I think this this works. This you know the set the set isn't what makes the show. The show mm. makes the set. Mm. Yeah. I love how excited Dylan just got. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan just mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And that is why I got the plywood. <laughs> It's like, you should see my, you should see my. It looks like they were just rioting here. They just try to protect the store. <laughs> Bro, you should see it from outside. You see the plywood in the window. You're like, oh, <laughs> let's stay away from this building. I walked in. I walked in. I thought they were trying to recreate somewhere I'd smoked crack in the past. <laughs> like you fucking crushed it. This looks like somewhere I would just light up a big old crack pipe. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> we're going to do the world's number one podcast from this fucking Ikea couch with the fucking plywood behind it. <sighs> He's so... <laughs> I'm set all the money on fucking world. The couch is coming some time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> world of women. So yeah, could you promote my fight? Sure. Yeah, uh, guys. August 29th, a couple of days. My brother's gonna be fighting on Showtime in Cleveland. Make sure to uh, watch him. Sunday, August 29th. Get your pay per view. Sunday, August 29th. Jake Paul, Tyron Woodley, Cleveland. We're another, bringing it home. Uh, another knockout to the to the meme collection. Baby. Are you are you are you gonna be upset if you don't get a knockout? Like you're kind of a knockout artist right now. That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. I've I've thought about that, but then I realized like I'm gonna knock him out. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what an artist! <laughs> <laughs> a true artist. He's fucking art. A true, He's knock a true a knockout true artist. No, but <laughs> seriously, bro, I'm not even kidding. Like, there's no possible way. Like, bro, when I put those gloves on, and I have that. Oh my god. Iron fist in the. Deep, deep, deep in the back of those crack gloves. <laughs> <laughs> deep, deep, deep in those right gloves. there yeah. in the back of those gloves. Man, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna crack his skull. Hell yeah! You know what I wanted to do? You know what I wanted to do? I wanted to go, go to my high school football field, sacred place for me. Took a piece of uh, dirt from it actually on our, on our very last game before they turned it into turf. I still have the jar. I collected it. I'm a collector. What's, uh, is it still in there? Yeah, it's disgusting. Dirt shrivels over time. Yeah, it's, I, I grabbed a large chunk. It's been a decade. It's this big now. <laughs> why it's not is, the first time I've said stuff like this before. Dirt, dirt shrivels <laughs> over time, dude. Who would have guessed? But I want to go I want to go back to the field and, and do something with uh, my friends. Think about this. I, I know I've already said it, but dude, we've lived this crazy life. Blessed to, to be around amazing people and, and, and live these amazing experiences. And we get to have all these people and all that we've like collected through all of our journey. And have collecting uh, people. Yes. And like I've collected <laughs> friends that I love. Well, it sounds like white from men all, to me. From all around the world. <laughs> I've collected so I've many built, people. I've built, a, I've built a community and I get to bring them to where uh, my, my, my life started. That is and Your nice. life started in high school? <laughs> Holy cow. Kind of feel. Guys, leave him alone, please. <laughs> leave my friend alone. No, I get what Let you're saying. Let him tell his story. I get it. I want to bring all of my friends to, to chorus class. All of the people, <laughs> all of the people you've collected. Please, if you're watching this, help me. I've been collected. I can't, I can't get out. You're I just an you're just an NFT <laughs> number. I'm 067. Help me, please. That's pretty rare. Oh my gosh. Uh you're going to, uh, okay, be Cleveland, you're going to knock this guy Can you out. wait yeah, for yeah, me yeah. to go to the field and do something fun until after? Uh, please, please. You're fighting on Sunday? Yeah, yeah. When do you leave? Tuesday. Well, leave the problem Tuesday. is that I'm going to be there for a Friday and also a Saturday. No. 
Yeah. But just wait for me, bro. Oh, you can. We can do that. You <laughs> can just, yeah, females in the audience. I'd, I'd happily stay around to. to you do can it just. On, yeah, you can just wait for me. Look, look, look. We'll see what what, what we can make happen. Are there going to be any teachers at your fight that that you? Uh, yeah, I invited uh Coach DeLuca, Coach D, and oh, Mission and, and, and Percival. Oh yeah, that I'm was pretty excited. much all the only like authorities that you fucked with. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Who's the one? I didn't really the like Anthony anyone else. Coach Ant. Coach Ant. Coach Ant. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's quite the shiner you got there. Where did you get that shiner? In the news clip of him? Yeah, you were there. When they did the oh, walk through the yeah, state. Yeah, he the got state. the black eye. Yeah, the state. The state. You had thing. such a rich Ohio accent at that point. Yeah. Talented. Ta- real challenged. 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 So you're going to knock this man out. I, I, I guarantee it. Like, I, like uh, I'd bet my cock on it. But also you <laughs> this just in. Wow. That's a, that's a risky bet. So you end up with an I I love Tyron Woodley tattoo and no dick. He puts wow. it above his clitoris. He's Holy like Holy <laughs> shit. That is a that is quite the bet. I I bet I bet my cock. <laughs> like I, but who does it go to if you lose? Me. Like, do you give it to George? You're, you're he collects a, NFTs at collect. Cocks. Wait, you're a bookie? They won't. They won't actually let you you're keep. Cock they won't let you keep it. I know Why? For, if you I put know. it in a jar over time, it shrivels. Nah, I know for a fact. I, won't, I know for a fact they won't let you keep you it. Can't keep cocks. Nah, can't keep any body part organs, that, yeah, that the sure. doctor removes. Huh. No, I've, no, I've no. Tried. What if a doctor yeah, doesn't remove it? I would just cut it off. Oh, he just here now. And then I catch it like a bouquet. <laughs> we're, we're, we're in the dick sand. But, um, <laughs> and you're having way too much fun. Way too much. <laughs> look, look how excited he is to catch a penis. Bro. <laughs> look at this guy, bro. He's like, yeah, bro, think of all the ways I can catch it. <laughs> He's the TikTok like, I'm my butterfly net. <laughs> I think like, I got my baseball, man. Can't take this one second longer. I can't take it one second longer. <laughs> <laughs> Look at George's eyebrows. They're perfect. Oh, God. Like they're painted on. Oh Tell my you gosh. what. You, you catch Jake's dick. You catch Jake's dick. We're going to put it in the same jar with my high school field dirt. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll, co- we'll collect a bunch of stuff that shrivels over time. <laughs> in the first year, you can't even put the jar or seal it up, but after the second year, oh, yeah. it that, starts. That thing squeezes right on. <laughs> Where I was going was, you're going to knock it. Yo, back. shut the fuck up, bro. <laughs> you, yo, he said that five times, and I wonder every time what he's actually going to say. <laughs> you are not allowed to go out anymore before I will, podcast. I will, I will make this perfect transition when someone allows me to. Uh, Mike, 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 what the fuck did you just say, dude? You are like you are a walking deja vu, bro. You just keep saying the same shit. <laughs> okay, good. So you're gonna <laughs> knock this guy out. But one thing you're also trying to do is stop kids from being knocked out by bullies. Can we talk about your new organization a little bit? If you let me say that, yeah, that I had cool. a good fucking question, assholes. <laughs> Boo. Yeah. Boo. Wait, let's, wait, hold on. Let us bully our friends before we go and talk hey, about it. If you don't cut off when you hear a transition guy, I can get it out the first fucking time. Yeah, you did Boxing Bullies boxing event. Yes, bullies, yes. Man. Tell us more, please. In, 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 incredible event. Heart, <coughs> heart touching, honestly. <coughs> uh, d- shut the fuck up. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Ch- Ch- That's Ch- how they treat Middle Easterns. I'm all the way back here. I'm just fucking oh yelling the whole time. This guy is out of okay, well, you guys are worse than the TSA. Carry on, <laughs> fucking asshole. <laughs> Fuck it. You know what they did before they fucking started this podcast? They moved him up a little bit further and they pushed me back a little farther back. What is that? Okay. Why is he talking like Rodney Dangerfield right now? He's <laughs> off the rails. Okay, first of all, you, uh, nah, I'm not even going to get into it. I'm not even going to get to it. Go ahead, please. So you- Bully saver. <laughs> No, he's not saving bullies. If you, if, <laughs> if you, <laughs> he started an organization. He's giving his kid a <laughs> He comes, he's like, that's not how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get in there. You gotta pull those shorts up. You're doing it all wrong. <laughs> Wait, you so, can't I'm see his shit marks that way. <laughs> no, are you? <laughs> Uh, his balls ain't even in his stomach. Uh, Wait, so who are you boxing? <laughs> <laughs> who is um, the bully boxing? 
I I, uh, I I created a foundation called Boxing Bullies, and it is it's sort of a double entendre. It's a fight back against bullying and cyberbullying, which is obviously a prevalent problem in, in our today's generation. And man, this all started because you know, I, and I've said this before. I, I was a bully as a kid, name calling people like on the bus, whatever. Didn't think anything of it, you know. Thought it was hilarious, so on and so forth. And then when I started to uh, blow up on Vine, you know, the kids in my high school were like, started saying things, tw creating fake Twitter accounts to like say hurtful things that I would see. And I was like, wow, this like really hurt me. This, this affect me. These, like, I don't like this at all. And it has always been a dream of mine to launch a foundation. And now I'm finally at a place where I'm able to give back, use my platform for good. And the meaning uh, is, you know, fight back against bullying, but then also get as many kids into the sport of boxing because I think that boxing helped give me confidence, courage, leadership. Discipline. Uh, it, yeah, discipline and got, got me to a place where I felt super secure with myself where now if someone says something to me or insults me, like I, I, I really don't, I truly don't care. Um, and so I think the sport can, can do the same for a lot of people. Uh, it can give them hope inspiration something to fight for uh literally and figuratively and we had our first event in puerto rico it went amazing uh and we're, we're just trying to give boxing gloves into the hands of as many kids as possible and just spread the message and create awareness around like hey you know just think twice before you send that tweet to a peer because that could stick with them for the rest of their life or think twice before you, you know, punch or beat, go beat up that kid in your school. And if you see bullying, to try to fight back against it, defend someone and help the person being bullied. And that's so really the so goal. you were a bully and then you got cyber bullied and now we want to end all bullying. <clears throat> I, I, don't, I don't think it's possible to end all bullying, but. Well, let's do it. Th that, that, that is the goal. If we can, if we can. You know, let's box all the bullies. If we can, <laughs> at what point are you the bully the again? <laughs> <laughs> if you bully bullies, you're still a bully, no? I, I the, the the mission isn't bully bullies. It's like, so hey, I that's gotta say cool. this one time at least. You 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 more than anyone on earth put two O's in the word. I'm sorry. You you call it bu bully, bullying. You're you're a little bit there, but I've never heard anyone. It's Ohio. Oh, it is? Yeah. Bully. I, 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 I would used to not be able to say my teacher's name. <laughs> Mr. Wooly. Wooly. I can't say it. Bully. Great math teacher. Every time you say it, I just- Great I math teacher. I like them. Ta yep. Taught me how to make salsa, actually. Yep. It's a drastic- <laughs> What the fuck? He was cool. Yo, what? what? After we did math, he invited me to his house and we, he, we were doing salsa dancing. He's like, you know, go good with this. No, how to salsa. <laughs> he cutting. was one of the cool teachers where like, would he'd be in class? He'd be like, yo, like we're, you, we're making salsa after did class. Did you have today. to keep you were, that between you, were, you guys? You were a teacher's pet though. Cause I had the exact uh, No, I just experience. wasn't a fucking asshole. <laughs> he just got petted I, by the teacher. Neither was I. Huh? Neither was I. You literally... Plant stole an iPhones explosive device people. in the toilet. You, you, so, stealing iPhones doesn't make you an asshole. That makes you a businessman. Mm, wow. That's an interesting An take. illegal businessman. And I don't recommend that to any kids. They shouldn't steal, of course. All right, but, kids. Here's what I recommend. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but. Eat your math teacher's <laughs> salsa. <laughs> Yeah, catching you. that. Why dick. is your math teacher making salsa? What? Bro, he knows. And everyone who made salsa with me knows. How many people have you made salsa with? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anybody that's made salsa with me, man? They, they know. know. <laughs> <laughs> There's like 10 people at home that watch and they're like, he's right. They're like, who are these people? They're like in the midst of a dip and they're like, <laughs> I'll always remember. <laughs> like the great Gatsby. Yo, yo, Mr. Wooly, you gotta help me. Mr. Wooly? <laughs> they don't believe me. <laughs> they're not believing me. Mr. Wooly. Bro, we made Made salsa. It was so good. It was so good. Was it? Would you say it's the best salsa you've ever made? Could be. I bet you, Mister Woolies, watching this right now, <laughs> like when the fuck? George, George, you know one time, George. You know Mr. one time Wo on, Mr. Wooly, a, on a, unfortunately. <clears throat> no. Show a little respect. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. Are we really laughing like that? And what you mean, we? What you mean? What you mean? You always have to like let people know. I, Mister Woolies, fine. He's at home eating salsa. I'm fucking with you. <laughs> Yeah, he's good. He's fine. He's chilling. Why 
Why would you do that? That is not funny at all. You were going to tell me a story? No, I mean, it's, it's irrelevant <laughs> at this point. Get, I don't even know. Your girlfriend walked in with her outfit looked like she's about to get casted in Step Up 19. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, boop, boop. I don't, I, don't, I don't love how much fun you're having. <laughs> it's called step. You've never watched Step Up. This whole with Channing Tatum. No, no, this whole podcast. You want me to leave? No, no, just no. having too much fun. <laughs> I kind of feel like the whole time I've been watching him, he's having like his own Boom. little podcast <laughs> over there. <He's> just, <laughs> just the fuck over <laughs> here. <laughs> you realize our guests have to swivel. They have to swivel <laughs> to talk to me. <laughs> See, that's not that funny. <laughs> is it funny at that's all? That's why I'm. Why you, are you guys laughing? Look at his face. He looks like he's he's doing drugs again. I, I'm not laughing. <laughs> I'm about to. I'm laughing at what he said. He's not laughing. I'm not laughing, bro, bro. I'm I'm like, all right, you say something, and then you just start laughing so hard, and I'm like, because <laughs> there's passing jokes in my head, <laughs> and I'm like, it's not the time to say. It. You're a special guy, George. Nah, I was so right. You were having I, too much fun. I try to get out of here, man, because I go, go, <laughs> go, go take a go take a lap. Daddy looks like like a DJ that did too much drugs. <laughs> okay. I think you need to get out. Of here. Go, go take a lap. What the fuck is wrong with him? <laughs> okay. I think you did acid. Take a lap. Just won't, just won't go, go. I think he took acid before just the breathe show. breathe into the nose and out through the mouth. Bro, I've never seen I couldn't it. imagine being like a, a, if I wasn't me, like a new guest on Gerard the show. Gerard Butler. Dude, can you fucking believe this? Dude. What? Gerard Butler is in Puerto Rico. We found out. And I was like, oh, like how sick, you know, my, my crew is here. My cast is here this weekend. How sick would it be to get him in here? Can you imagine that dude comes? And I'm like, yeah, bro, we're the number one podcast in the world. And he sees this shit on the windows. And George is, this is George. He's like, did someone say wind? <laughs> oh my God. I love it here. I love it here. <laughs> Gerard Butler comes off of his $50,000, $50 million set. I know. <laughs> He's like, what podcast? <laughs> this is the number one in the world? There's a fucking sign to recruit people to the <laughs> army. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I don't think I've ever laughed this much. It's oh. not possible that you're Feel out. my heart, bro. You know, you, know, you, you, know what, you know what I think about often? Do you see that the picture of the two aliens there? That the the ufologist James Fox gave us, yeah. so so the, that sketch was drawn by a preschooler who, who claimed to see aliens. I and recently I, saw an alien. Well, did they look like that? Because that seems a little fucking ridiculous, man. <laughs> Come on, bro. That's, where are their bodies? <laughs> if you if someone's like here, draw exactly what you saw, you'd be like, okay. <laughs> you get your sixty four pack of crayons. A lot of blue. A little gray. Let's make the eyes look like watermelon seeds. How old was this person? The preschooler. And, and the preschooler no goes, way. excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, they're like, uh, yeah. they're like, right, right, right. <laughs> they start beating him up and he comes out of nowhere. He's like, that's not how you do it. They're like, they're like, they're like, you're like, J Jimmy, why, why don't you go make some salsa with Mr. Wooly? <laughs> he touches me. I don't like it. It's <laughs> just a lot. Just oh my god, that's a lot to do with. Chest hurts. You saw you saw alien? Yeah. Did it look like that? It did. That's why I was like not I didn't think that segment was funny because I was like that preschooler definitely saw what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> was it traumatizing? Because you tell me you tell me when you guys lay under the stars, which you do a lot. That you you always see. That was the verbiage you used. You both of you. You always, always see a UFO, UFO every night. And shooting stars yeah, are shooting stars okay. Shooting stars. Mm -hmm. We saw like seven of them, and then we've seen a UFO at least twice. 
And, and the time I saw an alien, um, <laughs> should I tell him? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, get the fuck off this set. You really? We can't. You we're definitely not going to be able to go any further. Get off this set. Out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just, just. <laughs> you suck. You're the worst. <laughs> no, but like, what's next after this fight? <laughs> <laughs> so you knock him out. <laughs> so like, what's the next? <laughs> I think I think we're probably done. <laughs> How did this happen? <laughs> go go go! go. I, I'd rather I'd rather not. Okay. You know, like, c well, because the alien. It, yeah, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to this podcast, guys. Of impulsive. Uh, I, we are not on drugs. No one on the show is on drugs. I don't know what happened. I'm about here. to <laughs> fucking do drugs because of how chaotic this was. This was a, a nightmare. But it was a great to have you on. I love you. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna beat up Tyron Woodley in a couple of days here, August 29th, guys. Make sure to check it out on Showtime. And if you're in Cleveland, come to the fight. Come hang out with us. Uh, well, we're, we're not we're not gonna hang out with you, but come to the fight. <laughs> we, we'll be there. <laughs> but buy your tickets anyway. <laughs> I mean, bro, that 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 I, I said that and I was like, mm, let's be honest, I'm not I'm not hanging out with everyone. You might. Dobrik did. Uh, Dobrik did at La Palooza. He hung out with how many people? A lot, but he charged them like seventeen hundred. Okay, bro, no, this, is not, this is no meet and greet. <laughs> Shit. All right, all right, all right. Uh, anything else you want to say? Any any uh, any words? This uh, this will be a historic event. This will be a historic event. Cool. And uh, this will be. Cool. historic event yeah, yeah that's it cut <laughs> no no we, we're we've already cut oh the full access is uh is an amazing i don't think you understand what i'm saying <laughs> no that he's we're, not cut we're no longer podcasting no that no that we're still podcasting i think we are yep and uh for everyone who hasn't already go watch the all access on uh my youtube channel if you want to see the story <laughs> the behind the scenes the training for this fight it's pretty uh it's a pretty dope episode that Showtime did. <laughs> this is what I saw. <laughs> oh, no. Yo, imagine being the cop who who gets that, and they're like, "What the mm. fuck is this? <laughs> Two floating heads. <laughs> they have no so, bodies." So did they have bodies? <laughs> nope. Just I don't know. I couldn't see them. Just, <laughs> it was had, so scary to they me. They just had three quarters of a neck. This is what <laughs> I saw. <laughs> I'm replacing George. I feel like you can do a better job than George. Oh, we talked about you actually uh, co-hosting this podcast with me. Really? Yeah. You well, think maybe you could do it? You've been roasting me every time I, we hang out. Yeah, because your neck is just so Stop. long. It is <laughs> such a long neck. Bro, I, I'm standing I in the neck, kitchen, man. bro. I'm looking at Julia's neck. I, I knew I, it was coming, I go, too. I go, Julia, <laughs> have I ever told you how long your neck is? You know what I said? Wait, wait. You want to know what I said back? I said it's longer than your boxing career. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. That just started getting hot. You're so oh, yeah, fucking baby. hot. When yeah. I just fucking brush my bro. Oh, yeah. mm, just make a baby right now. Can I sit here now? Oh. We may, we may have to blur that. Yeah, shoot around it. Just the sound. Just keep the sound. Just keep the sound. Because otherwise, we'll get demonetized. Oh all right. I think. I think this. I think mm, something's you know, about to get de. All right, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> you know they said. You know they said that those aliens next were the inspiration behind Julia Rose's life. <laughs> oh no. No, my jaw's way bigger than that. Oh. Opa. <laughs> I think Thank I should be able to come. The number one podcast in the world. I'm your host, Logan Paul. I'm your co-host, Julia Rose. And uh, our Mike Malak. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Peace! Yeah.